Hey everyone, I'm Cody with Up to Code. Today I have Damien and Maggie with me. They're the renovation super couple. Now, you guys are almost done this basement suite. They helped me determine and figure out this Omega insulating panel system for basements. And so they actually developed the way to how to run the electrical in it. And so you guys are gonna take over. You did all the thinking and all the figuring for the electrical. So run, tell the audience what we're gonna be visiting today. Right, well, you know, it's actually pretty simple. We basically just had to figure out how to get the wire into the wall, like how to make a groove. We had to figure out uh, how to get the box, just the electrical box into the wall, what kind of box to use, and how to secure it in place. It really is that simple. Okay, well, we're gonna show the clips and the footage of these guys figuring out the system. And with that, let's just uh, show you what they figured out. Okay, so we're gonna put one of these plastic boxes in this and to do our panel. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we've marked our box height right here. Came around, we marked for the height we've chosen here, which in our circumstance is 19 inches. I've determined where the edge of the wood is in here. That's the top of my box. I'm gonna hold the box facing the wall. I'm gonna find where the edge of the panel is gonna be. And I'm gonna be, I wanna be next to next to one of these, one of the wood strips. I'm gonna level it. Nice and level. Make, push it against the wall, and you'll see it makes a nice dent. Just gotta make that nice dent there. So we're gonna make sure we're gonna cut for where the fin goes along the side. The panels are three and a half inches thick. These boxes are two and a quarter. I'm not worried about it. I'm actually just gonna take out the whole thing for that last little bit. If you're really concerned about it, you can always put a little bit of foam behind the box after you've done this, that's totally fine. But either way, I cut that out. We slide that guy in. We want it snug, so I'm not gonna get too carried away with cutting out a whole bunch of foam. But now that's snug, it's in there, it's square, it's nice and level. When it comes time to secure this, and I won't do it right now, but we'll just put a little bit of foam in here and along where the fins are, and then that's just gonna slide right in there and glue into place rock solid. So we'll do our wires after we get all these boxes mounted in the foam. So we're ready to cut our grooves to run our wire. And so a real simple way to do that is to use an electric chainsaw. The cheaper, the better. I got this one off of Facebook, cost me 60 bucks. And in the end, maybe I'll use it for pruning of trees or I can just sell it again. So what I'm gonna do first before I start digging into the foam with this thing, I'm just gonna put a little spacer on here. Most of the chainsaws will have a little bit of a hole here. And in this case, I'm gonna, I've just got a real simple way to make a spacer. I'm just gonna use a, a wooden block so I know that I want to set my wire approximately two inches deep, maybe two and a half, somewhere around there. So I'll know that if I set that block roughly in the middle of where there's a little four, this is a, a you know, this obviously is a bigger chainsaw than you need, but it's there. There we go. That's where I want to be, right there, okay. So I got my spot marked on here. I'm just gonna run a little screw in here. There, snug that up. Voila, fancy, fancy, fancy spacer. Okay, so before we run our groove through the foam, we just decided what height we want to run our wire. And wherever there's actually a two by four, we drill the hole through here uh, on both sides of the two by four so we can get our wire passed through. Wherever the Nadura uh, wood strapping is, we're actually just gonna go in behind with the wire. And so we're only gonna worry about that afterwards. In the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut the grooves along these lines all the way down. So we've got our chainsaw set up. All right, so now we've got our taut groove. I've removed the boxes from the wall and I've got a groove that I'm making down to meet the box. Now I'm gonna make sure that that groove lines up with our, uh, our 
our spot on our box we're actually going to enter the box so anyway that's going to be there you'll see when we go to run the wire it's going to have a hard time making this bend that's no big deal we'll clean those up just with a simple drywall saw when it comes time so let's finish these grooves All right, so for the next piece of this, after we've got all our grooves in place, now you go all along, you could just use your standard spade bit just to get in, be in behind these, um, the wood strips that's in the D Nadura panel. As you can see, I didn't cut through them. We wanna leave those intact. Anyway, so we're just gonna zip in behind these guys. Real simple. We go one from each side. And what you'll see is we're just going to, I'm not going to spend time checking on each one, but the wire will actually follow those, follow where the spade bit went. So you're going to get nice spacing deep in behind there, so no worries. And we're going to buzz along and do that to each one of these. That's something we're going to do right away. And then afterwards, I'm just going to use a simple shim. I use the back of a shim to actually put the wire in when it comes time. I'm just showing you kind of how this works. You jam that right in there. You've got lots of depth back in that wall. You don't have to worry about somebody doing something silly, running a drywall screw in the wrong spot. And that's how we're gonna get our wire in when it comes time. Once the wire's in, we'll foam it in place. But in the meantime, just gonna buzz around and get the spade bit. Done. All right, so here we are. We're gonna start by putting our wire in where we've made our grooves and our holes. And I've got a shim that I'm gonna use for afterwards to push the wire in. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna make a little hook on the end of here. And I'm just gonna get in behind where the little wood slats were. A bit noisy, but I'm gonna to try to pull back where my next plug is gonna be. And I'm just gonna thread this through. All right, so here's our spot. This is where we're gonna end up. So now back to our shim. I wanna give myself just a little bit more slack on that one end, so just loosen that up. That's pretty good there. And you just come back to where the wire is and just force it back in there. Just give it some depth in the wall, just in case somebody puts a, a drywall screw where they shouldn't. I mean, this is the exterior wall. It's not like you're running wire everywhere through foam. It's only when you're on an exterior wall, obviously. And it is an option to go up over top and, and down through. So you just have the one groove and back over top and less time in the foam. Um, you know, the benefit of doing this is just a little less wire. You're going to use more wire if you're going up and over all the time. So this just shows you that you can absolutely run this wire, no problem through here. And once this is done at this point, now we can actually make the, you know, our little spot in the, in the box where we're going to go in with the wire, tuck the wire into it, and then push it back into place. I'm gonna do that at the end, but then once that's in, then we go with a little bit of foam and we just squirt a little bit of foam inside this spot and push this back into its place. And a little bit of foam along here to keep the, the wire set back in there. And you can see it's, you know, if you look at that now, take a look over in this area here, you can kind of see as I push this back, you can see that wire is back to that point that kind of a depth in that wall. So very safe and not too complicated to get it back in. There. All right, so we're gonna put in some spray foam in wherever the wire is, and then a little bit on each side of the box. Uh, just so I've actually got the boxes just halfway out here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just putting a little bit in here. And you don't need a whole lot. You don't need a whole bunch to the point where it's squirting out because you really would like it to just stay inside the foam, uh, the, the plane of the foam. We'd like our spray foam just to stay right in there. So in this little guy, I'm just going to give him a little lift up. We're going to put a little bit on the sides. Like that. 
made a bit of a mess. It's been a while since I've done this, but anyway, and then back into the wall we go. And if it still wants to spring out a little bit because of the that last little bit of wire, I'm just gonna grab one of my shims to just make sure that wire holds back there because the wire may want to force the box out a little bit. And you don't really want that box sticking out because when it comes later to do your drywalling, it's pretty hard to get that box back in if it's already glued in place, so. Well, I appreciate you guys figuring out that system for me. So you're basically helping me look good. <laughs> but I'll give them all the credit. I had nothing to do with the electrical part, but you know, we figured out the install system together. So yeah. thank you guys. And if you guys have any questions at home, just feel free to comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.